Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. This is Jessica. I am your host today, and I am here with two amazing authors of the book Starbringer, which was super, super fun. Um, it just felt like an amalgam of all the things that I love and all the things that readers love, especially some of us who just sort of grew up thirsting for expansive worlds of sci-fi fiction with a little slight fantasy-ish tinge to it but wanted to wanted more out of it um you know like me especially uh I was definitely that sci-fi kid but there weren't a lot of um there weren't a lot of like active women in sci-fi books movies tv except for Princess Leia and some anime uh you know so it's always good to, to just read a book like Starbringer and um, just sort of get into all of these characters. So uh, I'm actually just going to uh, welcome Tracy Wolf and Nina Croft to Sci Asset Library's Turn the Page podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. So uh, this is such a fun book. There are so many great characters in it. Um, it's told from rotating perspective and it's got a really cool premise. So. Um, I want to hear from both of you, uh, first of all, where Starbringer came from and also how you two kind of came together and started writing. Awesome. Um, actually, I think Nina's been writing sci-fi a lot longer than I have. In my head, I always had a book. I had, I think, originally thought it would be why I had always had an idea for like Firefly Meets the Breakfast Club, but that was that was years ago and and I, I I had the idea and played with it and couldn't get a story to come together and um and left it. And so fast forward many years and we both share an editor, the editor who um was also my editor for the Crave series. And she had proposed because she thought our strengths and weaknesses would work really well together. And she had wanted a um a space opera like Firefly. And she thought the two of us would um would do a good job uh uh, writing together. And, um, I was in and Nina was in and we did a lot of brainstorming and a lot of different ideas and hit on Firefly meets the breakfast club way, you know, very, very, very different than, than the idea I had many years ago for, for a YA. And, um, and it kind of took off from there. Yeah. I mean, my agent actually contacted me and told me that Entangled Publishing were putting together a new imprint and was I interested in uh, co-authoring a book with Tracy based on Firefly? And yeah, I just leapt at it. I mean, Firefly is my favorite TV program ever. And Tracy is just such a fabulous author. I love a Crave series. So yeah, I was just totally in. Just sign me up. <laughs> I was going to say, Nina's such an amazing world builder. It was super exciting to get the chance to work with her. Yeah, um, yeah. She's uh, really Tracy mentioned, the world. Yeah, Tracy mentioned strengths and weaknesses. And yeah, my weaknesses. My editor's always saying you need more emotion. You have to put more emotion in there. And Tracy's just fabulous at that. So, yeah, we work well together. So, actually, that kind of um, comes to sort of one of the things I wanted to talk about. I mean, like, you have this really nice, big cast of characters. And they all have just such great, distinct voices. You know, you have um, Tali. You have... Uh, Rain and you have Ian and just they're all so different and what that's what I love about it was because you know when you when I watched Firefly um, it was such a great crew I remember somebody once saying oh it was pitched as Star Wars but all the characters are Han Solo and I'm like oh but not really. <laughs> yeah, and, you know <laughs> not not really everybody that's is sort of, I've never heard that before that's really? awesome no I've never heard that that is awesome I mean there's some Han Solo-ishness to you know like Mal and Zoe and oh, yeah. James and Han, Solo. Han Solo was the love of my life growing up he was the first person I fell in love with really so yeah I, so I mean I, and I agree I agree yeah Firefly, what's that? It's all but, that. 
but you know at the same time like there were distinct voices you know you had you had um Inara and you had uh, Simon who was not very Han Solo esque um and uh you know more Luke more Luke more Luke um, and I'm obviously more C three PO oh yes <laughs> I love it I love it yes he's very C three PO and then you have River but what I love about Starbringer is um while you did hit I see where the whole Breakfast Club meets firefly thing comes from you hit on that but it also had just this really wonderful expansive world and all of these really good characters so i remember you were just talking when we were just talking tracy you mentioned um that nina's really good at world building and nina said that you're always getting um sort of like input that you need more emotion so did you two write the characters together did um you know did like one person say okay i'm gonna take uh kylie's chapter will you take ian's or was it you know did you do um world building and characterization together uh, separately and then write together we actually worked very closely on the first 50 pages of the book it went backwards and forwards a lot of times um, before we were happy with it. And that's where the characters were really nailed down. And the world building was really nailed down as well at that point. So, yeah, so it went backwards and forwards for the first 50, 50 pages. We got that right. We were happy with that. And then basically I got the first draft. And then Tracy, I did a whole load of emotion, a bit more world building, just did her magic to it. Yeah, and Nina, Nina did a, a great first draft. Like I said, she's incredible with world building. So she added some like really fun details that I uh, that I never would have thought of. Things like the cactus that that Beckett's people on Beckett's planet eat that make her eyes turn yellow, and the red teeth from another planet, and just so many really interesting details. Um, as well as of course the bigger world and the um, you know, the sun and and the spaceship and all of that. Um, and then. Um, she did that while I was on tour for Crave. Um, I had like a three month tour that I was on in the, in the fall. And then when I got back from that, I settled down and I, I, um, basically took everything wonderful that she had done and just kind of, um, wrote a second draft over it. Not, not, obviously not a full second draft because she'd done such great work. Um, but, um, you know, just deepening the characters and, and yeah, focusing on yeah. their relationships. Yeah. And giving them, you know, just the little things that I think make characters feel like people. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it was really just good. And I love the idea of writing partners. You know, writing can be such a solitary uh, practice, um, which is not bad. But I think sometimes, you know, it's like when I don't know if either of you are Dungeons and Dragons players, but you kind of get a little bit more out of sort of um, talking about a fantasy world when you're talking about it with somebody else who's really excited about sci-fi or fantasy, you know, it's really, it just sort of, it feels like a lot of fun to co-write with someone and do it as a career. Hell, oh, I love co-writing. I think this is Nina. Nina has always said this is your first time co-writing, right, Nina? This is my very first time co-writing, yes. It's been an interesting, exciting experience, definitely. It's, it's definitely been interesting. I think we've <laughs> both been um, so busy that I think that we've both been so busy that it's it's been really kind of challenging to like fit everything in around that but um mm -hmm. but i think that it's also been really really fun it is really cool especially at the beginning of a project because that's when everything really comes together for me it's it's really cool to have you know someone to to really bounce things off of and i think that co-writing only works well I mean I've done it I've done it several times and 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 um maybe I'm wrong to to say this absolutely but I think that co-writing only works really well if you have a lot of respect for the the person that you're co-writing with because it's one of those things where Nina has strengths that I don't have and and hopefully I have some strengths that nice she doesn't lesson. have yeah, and we, you know, we kind of work really well together so that, you know, when we're dealing with something with world building and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that's the way I want to go. And Nina's like, you know, says, oh yeah, this is, this is, I think this is, and here's why, you know what, 
I I'm totally willing to follow her because I'm like, you know what? She, she's really good at this and I'm just gonna, gonna go with it. And then she turns out something amazing and you're like, oh yeah, right. Nina was totally right on, on that point or, or whatever it is. And I think that, I think that any co-writing experience that that's gonna, gonna end well and positively, I think has to be built on, on absolute mutual respect for each other and each other's crafts. Yeah, you have to understand the other person's strengths and really work with it. I mean, <laughs> I'm English, and I think we're a little more restrained than Americans, and I think that's why I find the difficulty in adding so much emotion. And I just love it when I see it done done really well. I just find it hard to do. We're such a reserved race. <laughs> I have to ask, so your characters, do did you both find yourselves playing favorites? Like, were you... Were, <laughs> And did you kind of like, I don't, I don't want to say argue over it, like parents arguing over your favorites, mm -hmm. but were you just like, at one point you're like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm right engaged now. And like, I just, I, I want to write, the, you know, want to stay with this character and versus uh, maybe another one of you was, you know, more into Rain, who was very interesting to you, by the way. I, I really uh, appreciated um, her inclusion also with the with the whole from the um point of view of like religion world building in the story which was obviously very important um did we have favorites well i've definitely got my favorites but i'm not going to say who they are uh but having said that i actually when i first envisaged the story i thought of rain as being the main character and yeah, I think Tracy was more the princess and I think she made the right decision. I think the princess was the main character and had the most at stake in the story. So, um, yes, we, we didn't argue at all, but we did have discussions about it and um, decided who, who was the most important. And I think we picked the right people. And I think that it's going to shift you. I think that Rain and Beckett, stole the stole the show i mean i love ian and callie i think they're fantastic but i think that and and have gotten a lot of, we think we've gotten a lot of feedback from readers that rain and beckett kind of uh despite having a little less page count kind of uh swooped in and and stole the show in some ways and i think that that's that's awesome and one of the things i think is really cool about being able to tell a story from so many points of view is it can shift from book to book. So book one, because it's an origin story and it's, you know, the beginning of this formation and it's who had the most to lose in book one is, is definitely Callie. So she had, you know, maybe more page count. That doesn't mean that in book two, it's going to be the same way, else. right? Um, we get to um, shift around and look at some other characters and, and maybe spotlight. I'm super excited to be able to do that. And I think Nina is too, because yeah, because we do have our favorites, you know, there's, um, I will say Merrick uh, crept up on me. Like I, yeah, so I like to be one of my favorites. I'm hoping Mary will have this? more. Obviously, you love Firefly. What are some other um, sort of space operas and characters that sort of came to mind while you were writing? Well, obviously, Star Wars. Um, I grew up with Star Wars, and it had a really big influence on me. Um, Book-wise, gosh, loads. I grew up read reading loads of, um, of science fiction, Robert Heinlein, Dune. Lots of things. More recently, I suppose what I've enjoyed is The Expanse. I loved The Expanse. Uh, I thought that was an excellent TV program. Tracy, what are some other what are some other like sci-fi um, space operas that kind of came to mind that are some of your favorites um, that you know when you were putting together Starbringer? Well, I am obviously a huge Star Wars fan. I think that I think that anybody who's writing in sci-fi has to be really familiar with that franchise. I actually really like um, Star Trek, the old and the new. My dad was a huge Star Trek fan, and we used to watch the um, the original series together when I was very young, um, you know, repeats, and um, he just knew them all by heart, and uh, I always loved that one. Um, so those are two of my favorites. I know this, I, I, for some reason, so I'm reading this, and another um, series that kind of came to mind, you know, because another thing I kind of just want to touch on is, like, how good the dialogue was in uh starbringer farscape. farscape farscape kind of came to mind a little bit as well when i was reading starbringer um which 
I don't know if either of you had watched it. But I don't. I've, I've watched it a long, long time ago. Yeah. It's fun. It's a. That's another fun one um, as well. That uh, in a way, I kind of feel like it's um, a precursor to um, Firefly. But the banter was really good. So that's kind of another thing I just wanted to ask. Um, did you two sort of play off each other as different characters? Like, you know, when you were writing, did you have phone calls where you're just sort of like kind of getting into character and like, okay, well, this is how, you know, they're <laughs> talking together. So how would this, how would this work to make their conversation feel natural? No, we didn't. But I think we might do in the next one because we're thinking of maybe a slightly different approach to the next one, taking alternate POVs to write. We haven't totally tied it down yet, but that's what we're thinking of. And I think that's going to take a lot more um, coordination and discussion and backwards and forwards. And yeah, I think I think so too. No, um, I think this time I love banter. Banter is my favorite thing in the in the whole world. We might. I think it's always going to be a, a changing process. Obviously, this was the first one we did together. Uh, and I think it did work, but it worked because of our situations at the time. As Tracy said, she was very, very busy when we were writing the first the first draft of it. And that's why we did it the way we did. This time, I think we're going to both try and just fit it in with our other schedules and go backwards and forwards so we can have more input as we go along. Um, because basically the world most of the world building is done. You know, the world is there. We have the world. So yeah. now we just need to populate it and do exciting things in it. <laughs> well, yeah, the world is done. The characters are set. Um, I mean, obviously it will be interesting. You know, maybe, you know, something, you know, here and there. But in general, we know who they are and we know what we want to do. We know what their arcs are. And so, yeah, I think it'll be a little fun to uh, shake things up a little bit. We definitely need to shake things up. <laughs> well, thank you so much. This was super fun. When um, does the next book, does it have a title? Or are we not allowed to talk about it yet? I've got a working title I'm thinking about, which is basically Stabbing a Countdown, which obviously if you've read the book, you know where that comes from. Yes. But that's just to keep in mind what is going on. Um, we'll have to have a think about it. Well, thank you so much. This was super fun. Uh, check out Starbringer. It is, again, like I said, if you're into all of the sci-fi fantasy-ish uh, worlds and you like, I don't know, you like big crews, <laughs> like in Firefly, who have uh, a lot of snark, um, check it out. It's super fun. Um, and it will i'm looking forward to the next one so thank you so much thank you jessica it's been great so thank you jessica it's been lovely oh it has been absolutely lovely and i hope to be able to talk to you about the next one when it comes out <laughs> thank you. i'm looking forward thank you. to it all right so once again this was jessica with say asset libraries turn the page podcast um my guests were uh nina croft and tracy wolf and we are going to close this chapter of turn the page it's time to close this chapter of turn the page join us for the next episode